morning everyone i hope you are well um i'm so sorry that the quality of this video isn't very good and the lighting's a bit sort of bright um but i'm recording on my phone because my camera has decided to not have any charge um and i've got to go out later for work so i don't have time to charge it today so instead of putting off the video even longer i thought i would make the video on my phone um I know it's been a couple of weeks since I last made my video and told everyone that I was pregnant. I planned to then record a video like literally like a week later and it's all just been so hectic. At work at the moment I have to work from home um, when I'm 28 weeks um, which is the start of March so I've only got a couple of weeks to keep going out and do doing all my visits. Um, for my caseload like to schools and nurseries and things like that so I'm literally every single day out on like multiple visits so I'm like super busy in that sense I've also been I don't know if you can like hear it but I'm quite like bunged up at the minute I think it's been over like a week um I think it's like a cold but I've been quite like chesty this morning with like lots of phlegm and um coughing and stuff but I've been doing covid tests I have to for work and they're all coming back negative so I think it is just sort of a normal winter cold thing going around. Um, and then also been busy with all the pregnancy stuff as well and obviously quite occupied with that. So I just wanted to share, I'm now in my second trimester. I am 24 weeks yesterday. Um, so I've gotten over the first trimester. I'm like halfway sort of through, nearly at the end of the second, I guess. Um, and I just wanted to share how that has been for me, being someone who's autistic and if there's any differences really. It's my first baby and obviously I've always been autistic so I don't really know a neurotypical person's sort of experience of pregnancy. Um, I haven't found it too bad. Um, in terms of actual physical symptoms and stuff in the first trimester, it wasn't horrendous. I did have morning sickness, it didn't come in the morning, it was just random across the day which was difficult with work, like if I was doing like an early morning visit I would struggle with the morning sickness and stuff if I was out in public. Um, so yeah, I did have a lot of sort of nausea um, and a couple of vomiting episodes. I don't really find vomiting or anything like that doesn't affect me in terms of sensory aspects um i'm not really bothered by it the only stuff that i really struggled with this was like a couple of weeks i can't remember how many weeks pregnant i was but i went to Lidl um to do a food shop on the bus and when i was in the store i felt like really really sick so i left i like abandoned my shopping and like went outside and I kept getting like really bad pains in my side like I couldn't stand up like even I had to just like bend over outside and then I started vomiting outside the shop and then it took me like 20 minutes of this pain to like ease before I could go back in the shop and finish my shopping um, and then I had to get the bus back from the shop to home and just as I pressed the bell to like get off at my stop I started vomiting like all over myself so it was like everywhere and I had to have a shower when I got in um, and that was just horrendous and I think it was made worse by the fact that I struggle in social situations anyway. So being stood in the middle of the supermarket um, in public with like loads of people around and starting to feel really sick and stuff was just stressing me out and made me even more anxious. And I obviously didn't ask anyone for help or anything like that. And um, it kind of put me off for like a week or two, like to go out by myself just in case the morning sickness came again so it's it's been quite horrible in that sense um and then i've had a similar episode a couple of weeks ago i think it was like two weeks ago um which is really strange because my morning sickness disappeared um but i came out of a visit got on the bus um felt really sick the entire bus journey i thought it was probably like travel sickness um because i do i do get travel sick if it's like hot and i've been you know traveling for a while um so I was having like lots of water I tried eating something because what I've noticed with this pregnancy is like if I let myself get too hungry I start getting really really sick and nauseous and things um so 
as soon as I got off, managed to hold it in. Like I was like really nauseous. And then as soon as I got off the bus, like I barely got off the bus and then just projectile vomited everywhere. Um, so that sort of stuff's been tricky. In terms of my autism having any impacts um, on how I experienced the first trimester, I would say there's there's a couple, I guess there's sensory experiences that are different. Um, you know, like when your sense of smell changes, like my sense of smell has been heightened anyway and with pregnancy it's got even more heightened. Um, going off certain foods, you know, having those safe foods and then only liking certain foods, going through the phases of craving food um, has probably affected me differently. And then in terms of the anxiety and overthinking, um, I've always been a worrier, like an overthinker, constantly thinking about things. And I just feel like since being pregnant, my mind hasn't stopped. It is constantly just goes off on a tangent on all these different things and I get like I just I think too much about things and worry about things too much um and I think that is related to my autism and my anxiety and the potential ADHD and all of those things sort of just making it like 10 times worse so that's been quite hard to get through um and I always find that with the appointments like the you know I'm like they book you in for appointments like in advance like you've got you know when I had my booking appointment I knew where my 24 week appointment is I knew where my 28 week one is I know what they're doing at it and you've just got so long like such a big gap between that that I'd just be overthinking it and going through it and these appointments aren't horrendous um you know they've all been my pregnancy's been going really smoothly they've all been going well um but I think, especially with the autism as well, I'm I'm not very good at confrontate, confrontation or like standing up for myself or challenging things. And that's what I've been trying to do in this pregnancy is make sure I have all of the information to make informed decisions. Because um, I've noticed with pregnancy, birth, I guess even having a child, you ha you're expected to make decisions. Um, and there's so many decisions that you have to make. And... I'm not against the NHS or the UK system, um, but sometimes health professionals don't give you all the information you need to make an informed decision. They they give you a biased sort of opinion on what you should do, and a lot of people, I think, make decisions based off that when they don't actually know the full information. Um, so I've been doing my like, own research into everything, making sure I've read up on everything, um, I've got books from like professionals just to help me um, make sure that I'm making informed decisions during my pregnancy and having that, um, just having that knowledge really, knowledge is power and trying to be a bit more like standing up for myself because I guess another thing that is affecting people being pregnant, especially those with autism or disabilities, is the COVID restrictions. Um, so my partner was allowed to come to my 12 week scan and my 20 week scan but no antenatal appointments so I'm going to antenatal appointments by myself which is hard in itself and it's also um if you struggle to make decisions or struggle to stand up for yourself and things like that which is related to my autism then that gets really tricky because it would be really helpful if I had someone there that could help with all those things so I think that is having an impact um, but I think it all needs to be individualised care and when you're pregnant it's how your autism affects you and how, you know, things affect you differently. Um, for example, I got booked in for a glucose tolerance test for my 28 week appointment and it was, they didn't, they're supposed to offer you stuff but they just booked it in um at my 12 week appointment but didn't tell me like when I opened my notes there was just a letter in there saying 28 week bloods that I was having this glucose test um and it's drinking three days worth of glucose in five minutes like in a drink that you down and then you have to sit in the hospital waiting room for three hours you're not allowed to like get up or walk around go to the toilet and things because the it can affect the results of the test and that sort of testing you know the drinking itself would be too sensory 
for me like I wouldn't be able to cope with that and then I would also not be able to sit in a waiting room in a hospital like that not being able to move um and it's a bit uncomfortable for me doing that at the minute with COVID as well like I wouldn't want to do that and there wasn't any sort of discussion of you know do I have to do this or what's an alternative like that you know it was just like you're booked in for this and that's that so I then had to go off and do my own research into um the glucose tolerance test any alternatives that you can do anything that's more accurate um you know what options were there for me um and I'm now having a fasting glucose blood test instead as an alternative because the drink just wasn't suitable for my autism and my needs so it's things like that that are affecting um I guess my pregnancy pathway differently and obviously it's different for everyone everyone's sensory needs and things are different in those senses so that's the first trimester otherwise has got went really really well um I had like I said the morning sickness um the pain that I was talking about that I had in the supermarket was round ligament pain and also constipation pains really really bad constipation and like wind pain um so once I increased my fiber and stuff that seemed to settle um I, I don't really think I had any other sort of symptoms um at the moment in the second trimester I'm getting a lot of leg cramps which have been really annoying um but I bought magnesium oil spray and ever since I started using that I'm not sure if it's a coincidence but I haven't had any leg cramps so touch wood um but it's all going really smoothly so far and I've been I've been keeping a little um this is like my pregnancy journal um and it's got sections in it so like planning and how we first met like name ideas um like a things to buy checklist um and then it get like each section so you've got like the first trimester um each week has like um boxes to fill in so how i feel what i've been up to and what i'm feeling grateful for and that carries on all the way until you pretty much give birth um and then there's like a memory section so you can put pictures and information of what you've been up to since getting pregnant so i find this really helpful and it's nice to look back on um in the future and for the baby to be able to look at as well of just how each week's gone and how how you've been feeling so it's been nice like looking at the first sort of trimester there's sort of things like feeling more emotional lots of bloating definitely nauseous is there like every week um heartburn i had quite a lot of to start with um not really now um lots of tiredness some food aversions and normal cravings anxiety about the scan so just sort of um you know that's just how, how it's been going if you have any questions that you want to ask me about my pregnancy or autism and being pregnant you know um being an autistic parent how that could affect things any questions please pop them below and any video requests i will make non-pregnancy videos as well i have one planned that i need to film so once i get my camera charged and i'm not so busy and hopefully when i'm working from home i'll have more time to make videos for you all after march so thanks for watching and thanks for hanging in there i know my videos have been really sort of sparse but i'm just trying to get my head around everything and I'm still here, still watching, still checking into YouTube. So if you ever want to leave a comment or any questions, I'll try and get back to them. Um, oh, but before we go, I wanted to show you. Um, this was our 20... Oh, it's probably going to be thing. Uh, our 20-week scan. It's reflecting off my phone. Um, but this is the head, the arm, the body, and then like the legs kind of there. Um, and you can kind of make out the nose here. Um, but that was our 20 week scan for anyone <laughs> that was interested in seeing it. But we're keeping the gender a surprise till birth. So the sex a surprise till birth. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.